What's going on guys? Today I want to take you through my small little two car garage wood shop. On a few of my woodworking videos, uh, I got a few comments on there that people said they just liked the look of the shop. I mentioned I might do a, a full tube kind of tour of it, so today that's what we're going to do. Um, and I figured I better do it now because we just listed this house, so hopefully moving on to bigger, better things. I need a detached shop, so hopefully that's in the near future. Um, and then I'll probably do a full series on that, like a a brand new woodworking shop build out video so stay tuned for that um, but for this I've made it work pretty good for what I use it for there's definitely some things I'm gonna change going on to the next place but uh, I'll go over my favorite tools so let's jump into it all right so I'm gonna take you through it kind of in order of how I would work so this is just my small lumber storage area. I don't store too much here. I've got a separate place off site of this where I store most of my lumber. Uh, basically when I get a job or a project to do, I get the lumber for it, bring it in here. It'll sit here for a couple days to let it acclimate to the humidity before I start working on it. Um, and this is just kind of cutoffs and scraps I got left over from projects. But this is definitely the first step. Not really anything special, but I found these shelves on a YouTube video and they're super strong. They work really well. Uh, basically it's just a two by four and then some plywood on each side. And it's super, super strong. I can put a ton of lumber on each one of them. So after it's acclimated here, usually the first step is going over to the jointer. So we're gonna go over there. For my jointer, I've got this six inch rigid floor base model jointer. I haven't had this thing too long, but for what I've used it for, this has been awesome. I did have a really small lend jointer and uh, that just wasn't working out for me. It was too small. It was a bench top one. I highly recommend if you're just now getting into woodworking stuff. Definitely if you're gonna buy a jointer, I'd get a floor base model right off the bat. It's a little more money but the bench top ones aren't that great. And ultimately, once you get into it, you're gonna buy one of these anyway. So you may as well just do it up front. But this is the first step. I get the lumber, bring them over here, clean up a face as well as an edge. Then after this, it's over to the planer. So for my planer, I have a 13 inch DW735. Uh, this is an awesome lunchbox planer. Uh, as far as like lunchbox planers, this is probably the best one you can get, in my opinion. Uh, and one thing I'm going to be looking to upgrade on this is I'm going to get the helical head. Um, and I'm going to get the helical head for this as well as that jointer too. They make a helical head for that. Biggest downside to that is the cost. Basically the helical head is just as much as the price of this whole planer. From what I've read on the reviews, I Definitely think it's gonna be worth it. It makes all the difference. Um, but a planer, that's what I use after the jointer. Once you get a clean face, as well as a clean edge, you can, you can clean up the other side on this and bring it down to your thickness. Moving on to the miter saw. Uh, I've got this, I don't even know what it is. It's a DeWalt DW716. Uh, this is a few years old. One thing when I was first getting into woodworking, I didn't know if I was going to be, you know, doing work stationary here or traveling around and doing work on job sites. So I did buy this mobile base and I really only used the mobile base once going somewhere to do work. Basically everything I do is in-house doing picture frames and furniture and stuff like that. So moving on to the new place. This is gonna be something I'm gonna change. I'm gonna do a whole miter saw station and it's gonna be stationary. So I'll be getting rid of this mobile base. It works okay, but these arms, they come out and if you get you know, a heavy enough piece of lumber, they just, they don't work out that great. They're pretty flimsy. But for a job site stand, that it works awesome. So 
So for my table saw, I've got this DeWalt. Um, this is also on a mobile stand, so this is another thing I'll be putting more stationary in the new shop. Another thing I want to do is I like how it's right to the edge of the bench like this, but I need to cut slots in my new bench so I can use my table saw sled. Right now I have to pull this back in order to use it. So the whole bench is going to get changed in the new place. This works out okay. Uh, the biggest thing about this bench is it moves up and down so I can bring it to level with my table saw which is what I mostly do. And then if I'm playing in longer boards I can bring it up to that same level. So it works out like that but the downside to that is it's pretty wobbly as you can see. So a nice solid bench is definitely going to be a priority in the new place. But this table saw, I've had no, absolutely no complaints about it. This, it works great. So on to the power tools I use. I use Milwaukee M18 for my cordless stuff. I've basically used mostly every brand of cordless stuff and I think by far Milwaukee is the best. Especially the fuel brushless line. You just, you cannot beat it. Um, it's pretty expensive, but hands down, I've had no complaints with them. It, the batteries are awesome. I definitely think if you're investing in cordless and doing all that, with whatever brand you go with, go with the brushless stuff. Uh, it's going to last longer. It's a lot more powerful. Yeah, this stuff's been awesome. Uh, basically, the way I store it so it's ready to go, I've got this pegboard, and I just kind of lay out the hooks in a variation I like, hang them all up there. So they're all one hand grab away and ready to go. Plus in the background of the woodworking videos, it looks pretty cool laid out like that. So for my router and router table, um, this is kind of over here off to the side. I don't really use it much because there's not a dedicated plug for it. So every time I do, I gotta pull it out, plug it in. I definitely just don't use it much. So in the new place, I wanna have a dedicated spot for this where it's plugged in and ready to go and I'll definitely use it more. Uh, basically as of right now the only thing I use that router for is for you know flattening big slabs. I got a, a router sled right here and it works really well for that. I got a really big slab flattening bit in there. But basically all my other things like if I got to put a chamfer on a picture frame or a table I use my Milwaukee cordless one uh, and that that works just completely fine. This is way overkill for that. Same with the bandsaw over here. This is another thing that's just kind of tucked over here. You know, doesn't get used much. I'll use it every now and then for, you know, the weirdly shaped charcuterie boards that are in right now. Stuff like that, but that'll be another thing for that'll have a dedicated spot in the new shop. So for dust collection, I basically just have this, you know, large shop vac. Uh, I don't really have the space in here for dust collection, so definitely not ideal, but, you know, after every project every now and then, I'll just clean up all the stuff with this, and it gets me by, it works good, but I'll definitely have a dedicated dust collection system in the new spot, so I'll be looking forward to that. So as far as heat goes, I've just got this comfort zone ceiling mounted heater. We've got that hardwired right into the panel. Uh, this thing does work great um, and you can't beat it for the price. I think I picked this up for like 110 bucks on Amazon. Uh, and then the wiring and stuff like that was a little more, but this works really good. I flick that on. If it's really cold out like it is right now, it's like 10 degrees out right now, but I'll flick that on a half hour before I come down here and it warms it up enough in here to comfortably work. However, in the new spot, ideally, I would really, really like a wood stove. It, um, it just makes completely sense for heating up a wood shop. I think a wood stove is hands down the best heat you can get for basically anything, but it just makes a ton of sense for a woodworker. So as far as sanders I use, when I first started, I used this DeWalt orbital sander. Uh, and this works really fine for light duty stuff, uh, picture frames, stuff like that, perfect for. It. It's nice and light, you can get it into smaller spaces, and definitely a good beginner sander right there. As I started doing more dining room tables and stuff like that, I had to beef it up a little bit. So I bought this Bosch orbital sander, 
And this thing is an absolute tank. It's drastically sped up my time to sand down tables, but it's definitely not something I recommend using for like picture frames and stuff like that. It's definitely overkill, it's super heavy. When you're doing the edge of a picture frame, it's super unbalanced and it's it honestly gets tiring doing it like that. So I still keep this on hand for small duty jobs like that. Yes, this is a $300 orbital sander, but definitely has been worth it, especially if you're doing tables and stuff like that. I do have a belt sander as well. I don't use it a ton, but there is some instances where it just makes sense. So I have that as well. So there's probably a bunch of things I'm forgetting, but if you got any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, and then on my new shop, once I get it and start building that out, if you got any ideas for that, definitely be sure to leave a comment on them too. I'd uh, definitely appreciate it. Anyway, if you got any ideas or inspiration from it, maybe you got a two car garage, you're looking to build into a wood shop. Um, if it helped you out at all, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and I'll catch you in the next one.